Okay, did you know that in the United States they consume over 400 million cups of coffee every single day? I mean, that is just a baffling statistic. Hey team, welcome back to another Levi Save the World Hildebrand episode, the channel where we prove that you don't need to be a hero to save the planet. Today, Leah and I are going to be walking you through how we make coffee that's good for us and the planet. This video, I'm proud to say, is sponsored by Clean Canteen. We have obviously been using their mugs and cups since way before they were ever a sponsor on this channel, so a huge thanks to them. Clean Canteen is also a really great sponsor because what they represent for here on the channel. Yeah, as you know, if you've been around here for a little while, we are giving away 100% of the AdSense revenue generated on this channel. And the only reason that we're able to do that is because of sponsorships like this. So that means that every single view that these videos get, every like, every comment, every share, every subscriber on this channel is helping to contribute to help save the planet. So if you aren't already, make sure that you are subscribed, that you've liked this video, and maybe go down there and leave a little comment for the algorithm. Like more likes, more money? More likes, more money. <laughs> for the planet. Now coffee is something that I've wanted to talk about on this channel for a very long time. It's something that almost everybody does. It's something that's baked into a lot of our habits and our routines, so we often overlook these things as a place where we might be able to implement changes. So hopefully this video is educational for you or informative or at least maybe entertaining because Leah's in it. <laughs> a lot of effort went into this, so thank you for being here. I put on makeup and earrings for this. I'm wearing a button down shirt. <laughs> this is not what we normally look like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> so first, coffee is a routine that we do here at home. Not just because of COVID, but because that's a part of our routine. That's a part of our tradition. And that's actually a really powerful aspect of reducing your waste. If you get into the habit of going and getting your coffee on the way to work, there's like this weird psychological routine that you have associated with that. And even though the coffee might not be better or might be super wasteful, and you might even know that, just the fact that it's a part of how you do it makes it really hard to change. So if you're making coffee at home, you're already one huge step ahead of the curve. Not that we don't wanna support local coffee shops, because I love local coffee shops, but if you can bring your own mug or have your coffee to stay, that's already a huge step, even if you're not having your coffee at home. And of course, if you're going to a coffee shop to get your coffee, you should bring your reusable clean canteen container. And all these fun different colors. I mean, Clearly this come one's mine. On. But another great reason to make your coffee at home is because it costs so much less. So much Yes, yeah, so it, much less. No, I think so, that's right. It costs you so said much. It, now it means nothing. So the average coffee at a coffee shop is anywhere between two dollars and four dollars, depending on the complexity of the drink that you're ordering. How fancy it is. And I did some rough math and we spend about thirty-five cents to fifty cents per cup of coffee using the system that we have right now and that we're about to show you. Really? That's it? Yeah. You, should, you, should we, you should tell we confess them, yeah, about you, how much we drink coffee? You tell them. So, we only drink coffee on the weekends. <laughs> we're, <laughs> and also, we mainly drink decaf. Oh, <laughs> ah. We still like good coffee, but you know, like Mr. Heart Condition over here. I know that a lot of you are probably just jump into the comments to leave like your slanderous terminology for decaf. And we've heard it, we've heard it all before. Brown sadness water, no fun Joe. I'm, I'm curious to see what you have to say because I'm sure there's lots that we haven't heard. But whether you drink decaf coffee or caffeinated coffee, there are better ways to drink your coffee all around. That's right, and that's what we're about to show you in this video, so. Um, yes. I guess, let's get into let's it. Let's show you. <laughs> oh my God. This is why I can't have coffee. <laughs> yeah. So these are all of the components of our zero waste coffee routine. So we have our beans here, our clean canteen reusable cup, bottom, and our beautiful pottery mugs that Levi's parents gave us for Christmas. Thanks, Diane Jean. Starting with the beans. The best part of these beans is that we can get them in our own container. 
And that can only happen if you go to a local coffee shop. So we've been able to do this in most of the cities that we've lived in together. Uh, we got this from Regard Coffee here in Nanaimo. And usually if you go to a local coffee shop that roasts their own beans and you say, hey, I wanna come by and bring my jar to fill, they're usually super into it. Yeah, they were able to do it contactless as well, where we just opened up the jar and they had this like massive scoop and just whoosh, right into it. So also COVID safe. So after we've ground the beans in a very unscientific way using whatever grinder we have at our disposal, <laughs> we use a French press or a pour over technique to make our coffee. The basic idea is to use something that doesn't involve a disposable filter of any kind. And French presses are kind of our preference because you get a lot more of the coffee flavor in our amateur experience. <laughs> I'm realizing the more that we go through this video that people who are coffee snobs are gonna hate this. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry, we don't have a water temperature thing. We are not scientific about this at all. So we pour uh, just boiling water <laughs> into the bottom. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and we, we like to pour some boiling water into our cups as well to pre-warm them. That's a that's, little sophisticated. Yeah, that's fancy. Uh, so after one minute, you see this nice crust here mm -hmm, on the coffee. Mm -hmm. Our friend who is a barista showed me that you break the crust. Break it. And what does that do? Darren, what does that do? I don't know. We should... <laughs> you I should, don't even uh, know what it does. You're supposed to do it. I don't know. But what's nice is, look, you get all of this nice, like, foam on the top. And what he does is he uses two spoons to, like, collect the fancy foam off the top. So I put that in my coffee because mm. I'm bougie. That's right. So the next thing that we do is we let it sit like this with the top on for three minutes. Oh, and then you gotta remember, you gotta remember this. Oh, yeah. We have a cozy. Okay, so it stays nice and hot, you know? So one of the biggest ways that you can reduce the impact that your coffee has on the environment is by choosing a plant-based creamer of some sort. This is the Cafe Edition Oat Creamer from Earth's Own, and it is the best that we've found. Yeah, we've tried like the silk ones and all those ones that come in those little tiny cartons, but they're really full of like sugars, so you just, Look, yeah, it does it, not taste good. Where this no. is like beautiful, creamy, has like a little bit of that oat sweetness, but it's not like putting syrup into your coffee. We, you can't get this in the United States, which is unfortunate, but there's a whole bunch of really awesome options out there and you're just gonna have to do a little bit of trial and error to figure out what works. If you have any recommendations for people watching this video, you can leave them down in the comments below. Yeah. Now let's uh, pour some coffee. So once we've poured our coffees, added the cream, we put any remnants from the French press into our clean canteen for safekeeping. This is the beauty of decaf before you knock it, is that you can have that sneaky cup and you don't have to feel bad about it. Then we put any leftover coffee grounds into the compost. Leah is obsessed with pottery and one of the hardest parts about not being in our apartment has been the lack of our own cups. Our own pottery mugs. So Levi's parents noticed how much I was missing our stuff. And so beautiful pottery from Levi's hometown, like where he grew up, same potter made both of these mugs. Yeah. Completely different styles. This one's clearly the Leo one. Leah loves pottery. Um, mm -hmm. And I love my clean canteens. So we are gonna hop to our sponsor segment where we thank Clean Canteen for being awesome and sponsoring this video. So as you can tell, we have a bit of a problem. These are all of the clean canteens that we own and I've had this water bottle for over eight years. Now, we probably don't need quite this many bottles from Clean Canteen, but obviously they sponsor our stuff, so we get bottles for free. And, and we actually use all of them. Yeah, we do genuinely use all of these bottles on a pretty regular basis. Yeah. But Clean Canteen does more than just make really great bottles. Let me explain. The reason why I love Clean Canteen is because they're committed to more than just making a cool bottle. Sure, they have great colors and industry leading statistics on how long they keep your drinks warm or cold, but they understand that has to be about more than just hype. 
They were one of the first brands to ever become a 1% for the Planet member, and they've been a registered B Corporation for a really long time. Having a reusable bottle is one of the first and easiest ways that you can make a difference. So if you ever need a reusable bottle or coffee mug of any kind, I highly suggest that you head down to the description and check them out for yourself. A huge thank you to Clean Canteen for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into the coffee. Another huge factor in your morning brew is the quality of the beans. That's like flavor, cost, and impact as well. Just another fact from our last video, Tim Hortons isn't even fair trade, which is really sad. Even yeah. McDonald's has fair trade coffee and Tim Hortons doesn't. Now fair trade is a third party certification to make sure that there's equal rights and pay for people producing coffee beans, but it's a little more complicated than that. I'm not gonna go into it fully here in this video because we don't have enough time and I don't know everything about it, to be honest. And there's a lot of other really good videos out there that already break that all down. We're happy to talk more about coffee, uh, mm -hmm. make another video about it, maybe about Starbucks or something else, yeah. but let us know if you're interested in that. You know, Leave a comment down below if you wanna see more coffee content. This is what we do whenever we're looking for beans. In general, local roasting Roasteries are going to have more direct relationships with small scale coffee bean producers. And that means that the people growing the beans for these drinks are actually able to support themselves long term. So while some of these smaller coffee producers may not technically be fair trade, mm. that's also because the fair trade certification is really expensive. Basically, fair trade certified coffee is the bare minimum of what you should expect for your morning brew. You can also look for a lot of other certifications that mean that the beans that mm. you're getting are more ethical and have less impact on the planet and on the folks who produce them. If you're interested in learning more about coffee harvesting and the industry in general, I highly recommend that you check out our Changing Climates video. My friend Charlie creates amazing content over there and he has a whole episode all about coffee. But regardless of your coffee preferences, whether you drink decaf or you, you drink the real thing, then we want to thank you for joining us here today. We are going to have a lot of exciting stuff going on on this channel and on our Patreon page over the course of the year. So make sure that you are subscribed to this channel, that you have those notifications on because if you like this, there is more to come. But if you are subscribed to this channel already, then we will see you in the next one. Bye. Cheers. Ooh, still warm. Really? <laughs> <laughs>